you can start. You can, you can start. He will copy when you finish. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Today we are going to give the presentation of this big question: What could be the best modeling strategy, both on the hydrology and the hydraulics, for the 1994 event analyzed in the Wa Valley? Here is our content of the presentation. We will first give our general overview of the steps of modeling strategy, and then is the specific strategies in terms of target. After that, we will give our conclusions and the recommendations. First, we, we, are, we can have a look of the strategy process for the strategy process, the main, the, the first step is discovery. The discovery, the information and the data are more as possible, and then we could develop the strategy development. And after that, is the is the strategy implementation. And for the for the final stage, we could do the measurements and the results. So basically. Is our strategy is creating the plan of actions to solve the target. Here, the graph shows the general scheme to the to to achieve the strategy. We identify six steps of the general scheme strategy. The first step is define proposed targets and outcomes. And for the step two, we know the catchment and the and its processes. Step three is define what modeling tools to use. And for the step four, we cover in the results. Also, we, we will do the analyze the results in the step five, and uh, the final step is optimize the procedures. Okay, so in general, what could be the best modeling strategy? Uh, in our team, we think it depends on the several aspects. The first would be the data availability, because based on the GIGO principle, it's very important to deal with data. And uh, then is the computational time, also is budget. The budget is also a very important aspect when you choose to make a strategy. And also, the accuracy of output and the user's knowledge about the tools is important. The final one is the efforts needed. So, so our target, so <coughs> our target is analyzing a flood event and uh, and uh, and uh, consider some research questions. Is there a flood event? The location of the flood, the sediment transport, extension of the flood area, water depths, and the flood direction. Also, is there flow over complex geometry infrastructures? So first of all, we need to know the basic information about the catchment process that uh, take place in upper catchment or lower catchment. For the upper catchment, the hydrological modeling is required and the process. And for the lower catchment, the hydraulic modeling is required and we consider the main factors of discharge, groundwater interaction, and the topography. Also, we can, our main concept, our main task is consider the flood events 1994, the Wa River. So the main, the main parameters we, we take into account is where it broke, the debris such as some trees and cars, and the sediment transport, and also the change in the flow directions. So for the strategy, the strategy for the hydrological modeling. We choose the distribute and the conceptual one. For example, in previous, in the last week, we use the HMS to do it. 
and also for the target of the hydraulic modeling, our target is volume of the runoff and the peak discharge, also the time of when peak will arrive. So this is uh, our strategy for target, uh, the target of our strategy. And after that is the hydraulic modeling. We use the calibrated hydrograph from the hydrological model of this two points to do the hydraulic modeling and the hydraulic model is conducted according to the research question. To quickly assess if a flood is going to occur, we can perform some hand calculations using many sequences. In our study case, we assumed the cross section was of a trap pseudo form. We averaged the slope on the whole subbasin and we took the average width as 80 meters, a many value of 0.04 and a discharge of 900 cubic meters, which corresponds to the sum of the peak discharge of Estehon and other rivers. With these parameters, after a few iteration, we obtain a water level height of 2.9 meters, which is superior to the river bed elevation. Therefore, a flood may occur. If the target is answering where the flood will occur, it's possible to use the borrowing strategy. First, let's set up a 1E hydraulic model. In, the, in this case, in MIC 11, the main input data are the output hydrograph from the hydrological model and the topography of the low bar. Second, let's simulate and analyze of the results like the water level and the velocity. After the simulation, it's advisable to do a calibration. Um, on the case of study, the calibration was done taking into account the roughness coefficient and the wear uh, coefficient, where were the most uh, sensi sensible parameters. The roughness coefficient was changed from 10 to 30 with the best allocation of 23 and the wear coefficient uh, between the range 1.4 and 1.6 for Homa formula. These values come from empirical tables that use the width and the height of the wear. As a result, as you can see in the graph, it's possible to obtain a longitudinal profile with the water level that can show the places where the flood can occur. It's also possible to obtain the volume of flood. And if the target is answering which is the effect of the sediment transport on the water level during a flood event, it's possible to use the following strategy. First step, set up a 1D hydrodynamic model with the calibrated hydrological peak from the last simulation and adding some import data for the sediment, like the mean diameter, which was assumed as 5 cm. After the simulation, it's necessary to analyze to check the effect of the sediment transport and identify zones about erosion and uh, deposition. The calibration can be done changing the equations of the transport. But in the study case, it was not done due to the scarcity of data and time. As a result, you can see that the figure shows the change of the area of the channel and the zones of erosion are highlighted with red and the deposition with green.
Generally, a flood event for the strategy is advisable to start from the last simulation and create some uh, scenario to work with. The first and second scenario are permanent state of the location and the geometry of the broken wheel. The analysis of the results must be focused on the water level and the calibration can be done changing the time of the peak. In the study case, the calibration was also not done. However, it's possible to appreciate the effect of the broken wheel in the water level and the location of the lag time. <coughs> in the case of modeling of floods like the event of 1994, it's important to analyze the It's important to analyze the extension of the flooded area and the water depths to have a better understanding of an integrated system. Assess the resilience of the affected area and the protocols, measure to mitigate the flood risks. In order to do that, we can use different model types. Each each one presenting its advantages and disadvantages. Here we can see the compar uh, comparison between the use of 1D and 2D models to simulate a flood event. 1D models that like Mike 11 are simpler, present a, a accurate uh, hydraulic description in reverse and the require less com computational effort. On the other hand, 2D models take more time, but it's the one recommended for modeling the flow within the flood plan. <coughs> the choice of a model type, 1D or 2D, depends on the problematic, the expected result, the morphology of the site, the existing data, the budget, and the deadlines of the project. There is not a better solution to be used, and the model types can be combined to um, maximize the advantage of each model and uh, minimize their limitations. For our study case, considering the conditions of this project, the combination of 1D and the 2D model was considered as a, a, a pro, appropriate uh, approach, approach to follow. This was made by using MIC flood, which allow, allows to couple MIC 11 and MIC 21. The strategy followed to obtain the flood map is described. It. First, an uh, um, analysis of the calibrated MIC 11 simulation was made to assess the location where overflow is uh, observed. After that, the model area was limited just for these areas in order to reduce the computational time. A 2D model of the terrain with 5 meter resolution was set up in MIC-21. By using mic Plus, the MIC-21 and the MIC-11 models were covered. That means uh, when there is overflow in MIC-11, the flow is transferred for MIC-21 domain to compute the water depth and the flow path. Initially, to obtain the flood map with the maximum water depth, the simulation was run only for the period when the peak discharge were observed because it requires less time. Later, a long simulation was made for all the periods where there was overflow in order to check the evolution of the water depth during the flood event. This is a 
said the model was set up in my flat, but when we but when we tried to run it in the server, there were some limitations.